What's up guys, Danny here. Thanks for joining in. I wanted to take just a quick minute to mention the fact that this channel is quickly approaching 3,000 subscribers. That is a huge milestone and really awesome. It makes me super excited. So I wanted to take a second to thank all my current subscribers, those of you that watch my content and support me and this channel. And if you happen to have found this video and you are not a subscriber, please help us hit that 3,000 subscriber mark. Go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a new sim racing video or have a sim racing live stream. Thanks so much and now on to the main content. Welcome back everybody, Danny here for another sim racing video and today we are taking a look at the new DLC that was just released, uh, the 70th anniversary Ferrari pack and uh, it's kind of late, I know a lot of people have already done videos on these but I thought I'd go ahead and do some as well. Uh, we're basically going to just take a test drive in each individual car but I'm going to split them up into individual videos that way they're not super incredibly long. Um, so the very first car we're going to take a look at out of this pack, oops, let's go back here, uh, is going to be this vehicle right here. This is the Ferrari 250 GTO, and I think that just about everybody will agree that this is probably the best car in this entire pack. Um, I have taken it around just a little bit, and it is a absolute joy to drive. So we're just going to take it out here uh, and do a couple of laps. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit what I think about it, um, whether uh, Assetto Corsa is uh, getting better with their cars or staying the same. I'll just give you a little bit of information, and we're just going to head out and do a few laps on the uh, 1967 model of uh, or version of Silverstone, because that was probably an era of track that this car would have actually driven on. So let's hop out on the track and see what this thing is all about. So here we are in game and as you can see this thing is absolute beauty. As a matter of fact, let's hop in here and let's play with our free cameras a little bit. And uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, just take a look around the car there. It's uh, very, very, uh, it is just a beautiful, beautiful car if you just take a look at that. Let's go around here to the back here. Uh, guys, if you want a tutorial on how to turn these free cameras on, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments and I will let you know how to do that if you don't. Let's uh, get a little sound clip from the back here, see how she sounds. Oh yeah. <laughs> sounds very good. They uh... Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Sounds like a, a Ferrari from the era for sure. So let's hop back in the car here and uh, we'll take her for a couple of laps. Tell you what I think. Been a little while since Assetto Corsa uh, did a um, DLC pack, so it was a nice refreshing taste to see something new. And uh, oh, this one almost seems like a little drifter or something. Sounds good. Uh, force feedback feels good, which it always does, to be honest with you. Uh, Kunos does do a very good job with their force feedback in most of their cars, uh, whether it's the original cars that came with the, the base game way back in the day or, uh, or any of the D DLC cars they've come out with. They're always really solid cars. Uh, I much prefer the game cars over um, really any mod uh, just because they just feel more complete to me for whatever reason. Hard, kind of hard to explain. This car sounds great. Brakes fairly well. Uh, it has a lot of initial, it has some initial turn in understeer, and then as soon as you get on the throttle, it goes immediately to oversteer, but that's kind of a fun characteristic of these old cars, and uh, so I think that they got that right. Funny thing is, this is almost, see there's that oversteer, when you're off throttle there's some oversteer, as soon as you get on the throttle, it kicks the ass end around. Sounds great. Does not like to steer on braking. I'm noticing a funny sound got some kind of funny sound it makes when you shift gears. Now this car is definitely an H pattern shifter car as they were back in the day. I'm using an H pattern shifter but listen to when I shift. 
Now you didn't hear it there. Um, let me get in a little lower gear and see if you can actually hear what I'm talking about. Bear with me as I come around this corner. Now let's let's listen, see if I hear what I'm talking about. Yeah, that there there's a noise there that almost sounds like uh, it should be a paddle shifter car, if that makes sense. The, the, the sound when you shift is almost too immediate and it's not matching up with my inputs. And that's something that you would kind of expect with a newer race car with the paddle shifter. Here, I'll, let's listen to it again. You hear that some kind of weird pop, but that's okay, I can overlook that. The car is still a blast. Um, on throttle, it is very loose and it makes it a freaking blast to drive. It's a lot of fun. Sounds amazing. Interior car sounds, interior car sounds sound great. Yeah, especially on the downshift. It, yeah, it's got a lot of understeer when you're not on throttle. Again, characteristic of an old car like this. Seems to have a ton of power. That's to be expected too. I'm not a big fan of that noise. Yeah, it just does not. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I hit the wall. Definitely, two things I'll say. It does not want to steer at all when you're not on throttle. And even worse, when you're on the brakes. And there's something, something about that noise, that delayed action or that delayed sound when you shift gears that just seems funny. I don't think that's the way it would be in actuality. can't hear it going into fifth gear, you can't really hear it going into fourth, but first, second, and third, you definitely can. We'll just do one more final lap here. See if I can get a, a decent clean lap in here. I hear a little backfire. Oh, <laughs> look at me trying to get a clean lap. I goofed that up big time. I'm trying to be silly and drift it. it. does actually surprisingly seem like it might be a fun little drifting car, though, because it does get loose on throttle. Very good. Yeah, very good, Kunos. Overall, I do like this car. It's very fun. Uh, I would recommend picking up this pack. Every car I've driven out of the pack so far has been a lot of fun. And uh, there's a few more that we have to go through. Uh, this was actually the first one, so we have to go through the entire rest of the pack. Yeah, that's a little drifting machine right there. Um, and we will, and uh, they'll be in uh, other videos, not in this video, like I said in the beginning. So, yeah, so this is pretty cool. Um, if you guys get the opportunity to pick up this pack and try out this car, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. We'll stop right here. We're going to end this video here, and I'll see you guys uh, for the next test drive on the next car in this pack. See you.